Hello everyone, I'm excited again to bring you another message inspired by God. This one titled, Accepting the Wrong While Living for God. This is taken from the King James Version. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. The Ordinance of Man. This is coming from 1 Peter chapter 2, 13 and 16, New Testament. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. So what is he talking about here? What are these ordinances of man? The person speaking here is Peter, and he's talking about the ordinances that may be passed by now, you know, new day and age, the president, the state officials, federal, all of which encompass the rules and regulations that we should follow. Okay? So... We may look at these types of uh, appointees or these officials and say, well, you know, I don't like this one, that one. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like them as a human being or a person. But it's, uh, you know, these are just people just doing their jobs, okay? They're sent, as it says in 14, they're sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. And Peter is trying to plead with us here in this passage specifically to submit yourself to them for the Lord's sake. And so we're going to see why it's so important to follow such ordinances of man. So in 15, it says, For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. You see, you thought that you were just walking this earth and no one was watching you. Nobody cared about anything that you did from the time you were born up to now. But here, not only is it the will of God that you do these things, but it's to put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So what are these foolish men? These are non-believers, the people who don't believe in God. Okay, they're going to go ahead and make obstacles in the way for you to fall in just to see how you're going to react. Okay, because I believe that a lot of times people are going to follow their hearts. Now, as Christians, we should not follow our hearts. Hearts are very deceptive, uh, you know. But if God be in you and you be in him, of course, we could follow those things as he says. My commandments will be then written on the fleshy tables of your heart, correct? So, but these people now of the world, they watch you and they say, well, what is he going to do as a man or woman of God? I think I start getting pointed to us or towards us when we say that we are Christians in God, I believe that things that weren't hard before become instantly harder. Why? Well, because now everyone is kind of holding you up to a whole nev- another degree. Not everyone may know everything about God, but they do know what is accepted of God. Because we have a conscience, a conscience that knows right from wrong. Now, whether people use this as a cloak, as we read in 16... As a cloak of maliciousness, that's up to them. But as for us, people of God, we are to do what is right in God's eyes. For think about it. Imagine if you were a man or woman of God, powerful indeed, but you're caught up in prison for stealing, for lying, for destroying somebody else's property. Now, how great could you be? You know, how could you bear such a strong title if you're in a prison house for doing something that was wrong. So that's why this ordinance of ordinance of man's are are so important for us to follow. And we can't say, well, you know, we're we're free as people of God. We could do whatever we want. No, we're able to do whatever we want in the spirit. Which means that if we're in church, if we're in our homes, you know, and the spirit move in us, we don't have to sit down in our seats, but we could express ourselves. You know, in order and in decency, of course. But God would lead you to do the things that are pleasing, to edify one another, not to condemn, not to put down. So with that being said, let's move on. It says, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. You know, I think a lot of times as I stop there in 17, you know, we may say, all right, I'm going to honor just these folks over here, just my family members. You know, but we're made after, all of us are made after the similitude of God. 
And so that's why we're supposed to love not only the brotherhood, but we're supposed to fear all those people and care for them the same way that we would like to be treated, okay? So in 18, it says, Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the forward. Which goes ahead and backs up the same, the same thing I was talking about before, about how you don't just look to the good and the gentle, because how easy is it for you to love those who love you? It's very easy. But if you want to be, as it says, be ye holy even as I am holy, you know, being Christ-like, you know, we have to go ahead and be good and gentle to those who are also forward, those who are brash, those who are rude, um, you know, those who try to lay us in these snares, try to get us fired at work, you know, try to go ahead and blame us for something that we didn't do. You know, I believe that God sees all these things, and I believe that you see know that too. But it's hard to believe sometimes when you feel that you have the power to correct these types of people. But I will bring you back to the knowledge of the fact that it says vengeance belongeth to God, not to us. You know, we may go ahead and get someone fired. We may get someone in trouble. But God could go so much deeper. He says, I know the very reins of your heart. I know your minds. I know your every thought. You know, so we we got to leave it up to God. We got to trust that he's going to do something for us. And if he doesn't, who you know, who cares? Just know that everything is counted to good to those who wait upon the Lord. So in 19, for this is thankworthy of a man for conscience toward God, endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? For if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. Now this is acceptable with God. So Peter here is trying to build up our spirits, build it up to something greater than even the words of just following the ordinances. He's trying to say, if you go ahead like Christ and suffer for wrong, yet you're right, then aren't we made into the similitude of God? Aren't we showing forth the praises of God? Aren't we then, you know, I, I believe truly that a lot of us are looking for, you know, to, to expound on the things of God, to show ourselves as true Christians, as true saints in God. And we're looking for the healings, we're waiting for the prophecies. But what about the simple, the simple parts? The simple things that don't seem to be too simple, especially when we get angry, like following the ordinances of God or of man. Whether it be the ordinance of God or whether it be the ordinance of man, we've got to follow them. Follow it with a fullness of heart. You know, because we may go ahead and say, but nobody's looking at this, you know. What if I say just one lie? You know, then we're called liars. And we should know that no liar shall enter in. So we got to be in that same sense, chasing our own selves. It's like chasing yourself before or judge yourself lest ye be judged, right? Or in another word, it says, you know, chasing yourself before you get chastened by God himself. Correct yourself before it's too late. You know, because in that you could be thankworthy of something greater. The thankworthiness comes from God. God could bless you in so many avenues. He could bless you with more than seeing that you could bear so much more. Not like other people that may go ahead and, you know, they get angry and they act or they react. No. You may get angry, but it says be angry and sin not. So already you're a step ahead of the rest. So let's go to the next segment. In conclusion, in 21, we're still in 1 Peter chapter 2, 21. For hereunto were we called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guilt found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Amen. You know, I believe that God knows and Christ knew all things, knowing that God is not going to let his feet dash against the rocks, knowing that he's not going to be led astray, knowing that he's not going to be left in darkness. And I believe that we've got to follow and believe the same things because it's true. Everyone who's called, as, as David said in the Psalms, I've seen old days. I've been young once. I've been old once. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken and his seed begging bread. 
And you know, I believe 